Okay, we are going to get started in this, as you can tell by the title, it's pre-op surgery. And this is preparing for the surgery. And some of you who have just joined in are probably thinking, what surgery? What's going on? What is she doing? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, now you guys know in the very beginning, um, go back and watch uh, my video I don't even know if I have a title, though, to tell you the truth. Let me let me just start from the beginning here. In the beginning, there was Adam and there was Eve. <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, actually, I'm not because, you know, it's her fault. She shouldn't have given him the apple. And if she hadn't, then our life wouldn't be so miserable now. Of course, he didn't have to eat it either. Okay. That's neither here nor there. Let's see. Let, let, okay. I digress. Okay. Y'all know back um, I was having heavy bleeding and... Uh, cramping and I had a polyp and the gynecologist took it out but then she also did a biopsy and it came back that I had uterine cancer so she referred me to a doctor out of town um, who comes highly recommended and so the beginning of this journey is I hit my first visit with him I went to see him and he explained all of this I'm going to take a picture of this and show you what this looks like and And he does robotic surgery, okay? He doesn't go in the uh, this way. He goes in this way to the belly button. And he says the robotic surgery, women heal faster. It's less painful. Everything is just easier on the patient. So, and he showed me where, you know, he's going to go through the belly button and come down. And what he's doing is uh, he's, he's going to do a lymph, node, a lymph node biopsy. And then he's going to do a total hysterectomy both tubes and ovaries okay and this is where he's kind of uh, circled where he's going into the belly button he's circled here's what he's doing okay and i am going to take a picture of this and that way y'all can just kind of pause it and look okay to see this was his explanation of everything that he's going to do for the surgery okay there's that so now um <clears throat> three days before surgery i have to start prepping actually I had to start prepping last week because they want you to be off of any S S N A I D S. S Let me get my paper so we can go through this together. Um, S N A I D S, I think, is what it's called. That's like aspirin, Tylenol, um, all that fun stuff. Sorry if I could get my act together and my papers. I have a bunch of papers here, but yeah. Anyway. Okay, here we go. Um, ten days prior, so I've already I've already stopped what I need to stop. Ten days prior, for a total hysterectomy and a tubal taking out your tubes and everything I told you that was going to be done, a total hysterectomy and everything. Um, ten days prior to the surgery, you have to stop all NSAIDs, which is all aspirin, all aspirin products which is ibuprofen, naproxen, diclofenac, diclofenac, if y'all's a nurse, you're probably like me and you are chopping that up, uh, silicoxib, methanamic acid, etercoxib, and I know methacin, <laughs> methacin, anyway, it does say call your pharmacy, but I had, he had already gone over and the nurse had already gone over the meds that I do take up there, so I don't, I didn't have to call because they already told me what, you know, what not to take and what, to, what I could take. Okay. So that was already stopped. Ten, I already started that 10 days. My surgery is uh, coming up. My surgery is uh, Wednesday of next week, the 9th. All right. Sorry, somebody was texting me. Okay. And then it also said the new diet, uh, the, the, the uh, Fetterman, Fetterman? Was Fetter, it's called Fetterman, with several brand names, including Loneman and Centus, must be stopped a minimum of four, 14 days prior to the surgery. And that is what they're talking about is the new diabetic weight loss medications like Monjuro need to be stopped 14, 14 days before surgery. If these medications are not stopped, the anesthesia department will not allow the surgery to take place. So if you're taking those the new weight loss stuff, 
you have to stop it 14 days and that that is a must and you have to do that and then uh okay it gives me items that i need to purchase for well we'll go we'll, we'll go through that in a minute okay to prep for three days before my surgery okay which is going to start seventh eighth and ninth two days before the surgery not three two days before the surgery so on Monday is when I start prepping for my surgery, which is on the 7th, I will wash uh, because I told you he's going through the belly button. So on the 7th, prior to the surgery, I'm going to, I'm going to wash the abdominal area, the belly button with the chlorofexidine, which is this, in which he got me, he, he had me go down to the pharmacy downstairs where he was and I got everything I needed from the pharmacy. So this two times per day, morning and night. That's clean the belly button area. And then it says shower using antibacterial soap. Then I I have to start taking the Celebrex, which is this one here, it gave me that. And it says take two Celebrex, one in the morning and one in the evening. And uh, then it also says drink two cartons of Ensure surgery. I can't do Ensure because I'm diabetic, but I can do Glucerna. So I've got to drink two bottles of Ensure, um, drink two cartons of Ensure before surgery. Not the day of, like the days before, before midnight, of course. And then it says you'll be called two days before your surgery with your arrival. So they will not call me until um, two days before my surgery. Surgery's on the 9th, so they're going to call me on the 7th and let me know what time. And they do that because they said the surgery time could very well change. I mean, he's very busy, and I don't know if it's because of cancellations. I don't know, but anyway. Uh, and it also says that I have to arrive three hours before my surgery time. I got a hair. Before my surgery time. Yeah. And then, it, um, then for the 8th, that was on the 7th, then on the 8th, I have to do the same thing, wash the abdominal area again with this uh, antiseptic chlorohexidine two times a day, morning and night, shower using antibacterial soap, take two Celebrex, one in the morning, one in the evening, and I think it says one in the morning, yeah, take two tablets every night at bedtime, starting two days prior to surgery. Okay, this one says, instead of morning and evening, it just says at bedtime, take two tablets at bedtime. Then it says, uh, again, drink some insure, which will be Glucerna for me. And that will be on the 8th. That will be the day before surgery. And then on the 9th, it also tells me to uh, remove any nail polish I already have, but I got to do it on my toes. I guess if they mean, if you're a nurse and you're watching this, and they tell me no nail polish for artificial nails in this mandatory, does that also mean my toenails? I mean, I guess it does, right? Okay. Anyway, my ignorance is shining through. Let me know. And then it says wash again uh, the morning of the surgery. I got to wash my abdominal area again, shower with the antibacterial soap, take two Celebrex, one in the morning and one in the evening if prescribed. Um, of course, it's not prescribed for in the morning, it's prescribed at bedtime. And then it says take two 500 milligram Tylenol at bedtime. This would be. Is that before the surgery? Drink two insure pre-surgery. Okay, this is for the nighttime too, which he also gave me the uh, Tylenol. Okay? Then it says no eating or drinking after midnight. However, when the nurse called me to, you know, that they, they called me yesterday to ask me questions and, and just, I guess, do like, they, are, they said they would call me and get questions. And one of the questions was, uh, they went over, well, they didn't have the question. They already knew what I was taking. They asked me what meds I was taking. Okay. She said, uh, stop the meds the day before. Don't take the meds. But she did say on the day of the surgery to take the omeprazole. And I said, but I thought you said no water, no anything, you know, MPO after midnight. And she said, well, you can take the omeprazole. The omep my omeprazole is for dig digestion, you know, to help me digest. And she said, you can take it with one swallow of water. That's it. So, I'm like, okay. 
that's what you want. That's what you get. So anyway, these are all the pre pre surgery, and of course it does say pack a bag. Um, I need chewing gum. It says you will be encouraged to chew gum after surgery to help your stomach and bowels start to work. Bring enough gum to the hospital with you so you can chew gum two to three times per day. I'm not going to be there every day. I'm only going to be there four hours after, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. Okay, so I pack a bag means, and I also said bring my bring my medicines and everything that he gave me too, because they gave me after pain pills. They gave me pain pills too. So anyway, day of surgery um, says you can uh, drink as you wish after surgery. After, this is this is going to be after my surgery. This is what's going to happen. Um, you will be offered crackers as soon as you're awake. Later in the day, you will resume a regular diet. Small amounts are best rather than a large meal. Stop eating if you feel full or nauseous. And then you'll be discharged home after four hours. If I can do these. Okay. If I can get all this done and I'm fixing to tell you, then they're going to let me go home in four hours. Okay, number one, be eating and drinking a light diet. Walking in the hall. They said as soon as I wake up, they're going to walk me in the hall. Have your pain and NV controlled. Um, and I have pain pills. Not have fever. Pass gas. And your surgeon or member of your surgeon's team has evaluated you and approves you to go home. And that's, that's, uh, the surgery if I can do all of that they'll let me go home in, in four hours and then the post-op day one for post-op first day after surgery at home this is this is what happens I'm telling you guys all of this just in case you have this coming up you got to have a complete hysterectomy or total hysterectomy and and you know all that fun stuff and your uterus and, and ovaries and all that taken out I'm just y'all's gonna go on this journey with me Okay, it says walk up, or walk up, post-op at home, up in the chair for six hours total, walk at least four times, soreness is to be expected, but it should not limit your ability to be active, drink non-carbonated drinks up to 68 ounces per day, um, you may shower if you're feeling steady on your feet, no baths, post-op number two at home, day two. The more you move, the faster you'll recover. Walk as much as possible. No lifting over 15 pounds for six weeks. And then it says avoid bending, twisting it, or twisting at waist. Avoid reaching and or pulling and pushing. Do not take a bath or immerse in any water at times six weeks. This includes the bathtub, swimming pool, ocean, lake, or hot tub. Immerse means in the water, down underneath in the water. Okay, what to expect after leaving the hospital? They have already said uh, pre before surgery, um, they want me drinking a lot of protein. They want me eating high protein meals. Okay, so here's the diet for what to expect after leaving the hospital. You may eat a regular diet unless your surgeon or dietitian tells you otherwise. It is important to eat plenty of protein to help with the healing. It's important to drink at least six to eight large glasses of water each day. I do that anyway. Good protein foods include dairy products, meat, fish, poultry, protein shakes. I do the protein shakes. We eat a lot of chicken, and I eat a lot of tuna fish. I don't know if the tuna fish is fish, but it's fish, right? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, then it says bowel function. Your bowel habits may change after surgery. You may go home before your bowel movement, but this should happen within two to three days after leaving the hospital. Constipation after surgery is very common due to pain medication and general anesthesia, especially if you battle constipation prior to the surgery. But it's our, it already says here to buy some Marilax. And it says we recommend Marilax every day up to three times daily until bowel movements are normal. It can take up to 48 hours for Miralax to take full effect. Increase your liquids and fiber after surgery are important. If you have been taking Miralax daily with no result as a last resort, you can use Fleet Enema. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. And then for the wound care, which is around the belly button, um, it says you should clean your wound daily with soap and water, which I use Dial, which is an antibacterial soap. You may take a shower, let the soap run, water run over the incision and pat the incision with a towel. You can put soap on your hand or wash the incision, but do not scrub. 
do not use lotions, creams on or around the incision. You want it to be dry and clean, which is something else they already said. Can't wear makeup for the surgery, of course. No makeup, no perfume, no lotions, no, no nothing, okay? No girly stuff. None, okay? None. <sighs> they won't even recognize me. <laughs> anyway, medications. You can begin your regular medication when you arrive home from the hospital. So um, I can start taking my medication again. All right, pain. After surgery is common and will improve with time. It's important that you take your pain medication only as prescribed. And he, he did prescribe me some strong medication, strong, and I won't be taking it. I don't, I don't, I don't like that strong stuff, okay? I just don't. Mm, yeah. Anyway, then, um, okay, you can continue to take your non-narcotic pain medications on a regular basis. The acetaminophen, which is 500 milligram. He gave me those. The hospital may also give you instructions on resuming your regular home medications, um, wound care, and pain management. They'll tell me all of that. Then for activities, when I come home, walk, walk, and walk is what it says. You should stay active once you're at home. I'm trying to get this done, guys, pretty quickly. You should walk short distances daily. Do not lift anything greater than 15 pounds, about the weight of a gallon of milk, until your surgeon clears you for more activity. Um, you will do a follow-up appointment. I already have that follow-up done for the following week. Okay. And then they have a thing, when should I call my surgeon? Uh, if you have a fever of 101 degrees or higher, sudden or steady decline in how you feel, increased drainage or foul smelling drainage in the incision site, increased pain or redness at your incision site, any opening of your incision, pain, nausea, vomiting that is increased or not controlled by medications, diarrhea, constipation that is not controlled by your medication, shortness of breath or swelling in your legs. And there's that. Okay? Anyway, that is, that consists of pre-op. This is things that I have to start doing um, Monday. Today is, I'm doing this video, um, well, today is, uh, what's today? Today's Thursday. You'll see this video tomorrow, which is Friday, okay? You'll be seeing this on Friday. Because um, I have another video I'm going to put up before this one. But you'll see this on Friday. And I don't know. Um, I may vlog a little bit. Daniel and I have to go to town tomorrow. And I'll probably vlog a little, vlog a little bit with it. And you may. I, I may put. I don't, I don't put videos up on Sundays. But I may put it up on Monday. But starting Monday. If I put one up. It'll be that one. But I'm not going to put very many up. And the simple reason being. I'm going to be busy. Okay. Um. I got to get my mind right, okay? I got to get my mind right on, because I have to start the cleanse, the cleaning of the the uh, belly button morning and evening, and showering, and I got to get the pills right, and it, it's it's I got to start homing in. Y'all know I'm 61 years old. In my brain, just I I I can't do 110 things at once anymore. It's like you have to, you know, I have to do, yeah, yeah. So, you may not see a video until uh, Thursday or Friday. Now, here's what I plan on doing with you guys. I plan on letting Daniel vlog, uh, or Daniel do some of the video, like when I'm going into the hospital to check in for the surgery. I kind of want him to do a, a little clip of me signing in, checking in. Um... If he's going to be back with me, which I think he is until time for the surgery, because, heck, I have to be there three hours before, and then, you know, you prep. And I want him to get a little clip of, of me in there, you know, getting ready for surgery. And um, after surgery, I'm going to have him I'm gonna have him do a clip of me after surgery. You know, even if I'm in pain, I, I'm going to have him do a little bit of that. Not a whole lot, because, <laughs> you know, I may be cranky or crap. <laughs> but anyway that and um just just little clips of the journey okay little clips of the journey and then i may vlog on the way home and i may not if i'm not feeling good and i'm in a lot of pain then i may not 
but I'm going to try to get clips here and there. Once I get home and get settled and get, you know, laid down or get whatever I got to do, I will, I will again put up, I don't know if this will all be in the same one, but I'll again, you know, uh, do some clips of how I'm feeling, you know, if I'm feeling better, how I'm feeling, if I'm not. See, I, we're going to go through this journey together all the way to the end, okay? And the ending result is going to be God has healed me. And there, he got it all, which we won't know that. But, well, we do know that. We do know that. We, we all agree. We are all in agreement that he's going to get it on and we're done. Um, uh, what he's going to do, he said, when he takes out the uterus, the total hysterectomy, the uterus, all of that, when he takes it all out, he puts it in a bag. And then he takes that bag and he sends it off to the pathologist, who then will tell him what type of cancer it is, which we know it ain't going to be any type. It's going to be gone. He's going to get it all and going to be gone, right? Right. Um, and that's how that works. But anyway, we're, we're going through this journey together, and I went through the pre-op with you. Um, went to the post-op with you, <laughs> and that's it. That's basically, that's how it's going to go down. And it, like I said, my journey is going to start on Monday because i got to get everything prepped and ready to go. And, you know, clean the area and all of that all the way up to the surgery, which is on Wednesday, which is the 9th on Wednesday. So, y'all put on your calendar on the 9th on Wednesday. Y'all just all put on your calendar to be praying for me, okay? I would appreciate that greatly. All right, guys. <clears throat> There you go. There is all the information that's going to be going on with the surgery. And all I know to tell you is that shirt ain't hanging right. Or am I just not sitting right? Anyway, all I know to tell you is just be praying. We know God is God is the great I am. He's the healer. He's everything to me. That's for sure. But um, we're, we're going to get through this together. I'm going to take you guys along and no needles. Whatever while well, I'm there. <laughs> um, we're going to get through this together and at the end of the journey we will discuss. I might put up another video of how everything went. Even though I'm going to do clips of how everything goes, I want to do how everything went as well. You know, how I felt, what happened, maybe even things that come up while I was there. Um, like the meals and stuff. So I'm going to try to get it all. Okay. We're going to try to get it all. We're going to go through this together. Because why? Because we are family. I got all my sisters with me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I am off of here. I don't know where I'm at. But I didn't want this to be real long. But I did want to update you guys on everything that I've been told. Everything that's going on. Everything I have to prep for. Everything I have to do. Um, my doctor is about 30 minutes away from us. I told you all an hour. But he's about 30 minutes away from us. But the hospital that the surgery is in, which is in Rogers, Arkansas, that's about an hour or a little over an hour for us. So, and... Um, I don't know when the surgery is, but again, he wants he wants me three he wants all of his patients, not just me, three hours before surgery time. So we're probably gonna have to get up the crack of dawn just to get up there because it's it's a little over an hour um, to get to Rogers from where I live. So anyway, be praying for the trip, be praying for me, um, and I do appreciate you guys, each and every one of you. And I'll be back with you later on that one. And like I said, it may or may not have a video up Monday. Um, I may go, I, I will go ahead and vlog when we go to town tomorrow and I'll put that one up Monday. But after Monday, you may not see me till after surgery, which will be on Friday. So until then, keep reaching for the stars. Who was that said that? Casey Kasem. Keep your feet on the ground. Keep reaching for the stars. I always thought that was the most awesome thing when he would say that. But anyway, keep going to Annie Eloise when it. See y'all later. Bye guys.